Week after week, there's been an overbearing, oppressive force in the Vegas vlogging community. The force simply known as hype. With the ongoing deluge of live streams, reviews, and walkthroughs, it's clear that the last thing the internet needs is yet another Resorts World Las Vegas critique. But despite this, even as I sit on the edge of sleep contemplating the 15 years of excitement, anticipation, and, dare I say, worry associated with this project, I can't help but think something else needs to be said or done. Someone else needs to hurl an opinion into the air. Someone else needs to pick apart every detail of this project a decade and a half in the making. Someone needs to strike back against the news and social media frenzy. These thoughts permeate my mind and push me closer and closer to the inevitable. Then, eventually, I get my key and open the door. Yes, despite the fact that we have reviews of all flavors, low-key and systematic, extravagant and hyperbolic, we'll need just one more. One more that I hope I can use to offer a perspective that somehow hasn't been covered in all the media coverage, speculation, and analysis since January of 2006 up to July 22nd of 2021. Judgment Day is here, and a comprehensive review of Resorts World Las Vegas is due. Too early to be a retrospective, but too late to be a review. Instead, I'm here to answer one simple question. How good is Resorts World Las Vegas actually? Thank you all from the stardust to just dust for Welcome about 14 to years. It took them the better part of 14 hey, years. What's up, guys? Hello. Jordan and Ashton here from Show Me Vegas. We learned Zed is going to have a residency there. It smells so new in here. Retail Village courts a trendy Asian crowd and will be a phenomenon. You need to hit the cash machine if you come to Resort Hall. We're hoping that they, they outsell us. Spinners and Sharks, if I had to pick one word to describe Resorts World Las Vegas, it would have to be grandiose. The ambition of this project, even in the modern day, is both equal parts intimidating and impressive. The $4.3 billion behemoth that is Resorts World is theoretically like nothing else in the world. An on-site water park, a replica of the Great Wall of China, a panda exhibit, and more. Back in March of 2013, Resorts World was looking to be the greatest theme hotel casino in all of Las Vegas. But things change, and the final product is rarely what you expect it to be. Let's go over the basics of Resorts World. The hotel itself is more like three hotels. The primary towers, Crockford's, Hilton, and Conrad Towers, are all operated by Hilton Hotels and Resorts, while the casino itself is operated by Genting Group. Wait, Genting or Genting? Hang on. Genting. Okay, well, wait, there's a British version? Genting. Forget it, it's Malaysian. Let's just learn how to say it in Malay. Genting. Okay, Genting is closer to the original language. Let's just stick with that. Regardless, the Genting and Hilton partnership has created one hell of a property. You have 3,500 rooms to choose from when you book, and a 117,000 square foot casino to entertain yourself in if you're a gambler. If you're not exactly into gambling, then you can cool out by the 5.5 acre pool complex, get your valley girl on at the double decker mall on site, or simply indulge at one of the 40 eateries on campus. Additionally, it has plenty of other standard Las Vegas features. A separate day club, cabana pools, hotel bars both in the lobbies and the casino, an all-you-can-eat buffet, adults-only lounges, DJ residency at the nightclub, and of course a theater on-site for concerts and other musical performances. But Resorts World won't stop there. Oh no, it's a millennial and Gen Z paradise. Or so they say. But what I think they mean is, aside from the architecture, the hotel is hyper-modern. The slot machines and bar tops have USB charging ports and wireless charging spots for smartphones. You can gamble only using your smartphone. You have the option to bypass American money entirely by linking your Bitcoin wallet to your Resorts World app. You don't need a key for your room, you just use your phone. The iHomes in the rooms are wireless. The concierge is a Star Wars-loving artificial intelligence program. 
everything here should have people thinking this is the coolest hotel ever. Resorts World is clearly an easy 5 star property, right? More than enough to close down the Wynn, the Cosmo, the Venetian, and the Aria just on the merit of being close to them, right? Well, not really. And there are reasons for that. Let's put a pin in that for now, we'll get to it later. I'd prefer to start off with the benefits of Resorts World Las Vegas before we get into its weaknesses. To start off, the pricing is competitive. Looking at getting a room here is roughly what you'd be looking at to stay somewhere like Bellagio, Wynn, Venetian, Cosmo, Aria, or even Circa. On the merit of it being brand new, the rooms are amazingly clean. I absolutely love the design of the bathrooms. The rainwater shower head is a must, especially for taller hotel guests, and the shower bench is considerate of all guest needs. Whether you just want to take a break from standing, or if you have a not so visible disability that necessitates that, the bathroom is just right. The rooms are also loaded with both AC and USB electrical wall ports, meaning you can charge whatever you want, wherever you want. And once the area is built up a bit more, the views will be spectacular. The staff is friendly and knowledgeable, almost to a fault. I usually stay and play with M-Life, and I'd say it even trumps my best experiences there as a gold level player. Which is impressive, since it was my very first visit to Resorts World with an absolute garbage tier genting rewards card. The staff took responsibility to correct any mistakes, even the ones we didn't notice, and clearly had the power to make decisions. That should be par for the course, but you don't always see that in Las Vegas nowadays, unless you hold special status with the property. As always, I have to give points for the pool. There are multiple pool options, including a special family pool option that's almost akin to a Disney hotel pool. The area is gorgeous, clean as a rule, and has plenty of seating options in and out of the pool. Special mention goes to the infinity pool with its own private bar and overlook of the Las Vegas Strip. The idea of putting the pool on the roof works and naturally prevents some of the challenges of other hotels. Namely, forcing you to go through the casino to access the pool, like MGM Grand or Luxor tend to. All it takes is a quick trip down the elevator from your room, which I prefer since I feel a bit awkward in swim trunks walking my way through the casino. There are an amazing amount of restaurants in all sorts of different price ranges. Street food, proper sit-down restaurants with both foreign and domestic flavors. You can get anything from steak to sushi to even something simple like all-you-can-eat shrimp plates for brunch. The cocktails are pretty cool too. Resorts World has its own in-house mixologist that created several custom cocktails exclusively for the property. And they do them so well that they're bold enough to put the recipes right there on the menu. They're pretty straightforward and simple, though others are the very definition of extravagant, as is expected with such a property. And while we're on the subject of extravagance, there's nothing on property that describes that more than the nightlife. Every other lounge has a DJ, and ranges from quiet and classy to loud and energetic, and even further beyond in the high-end nightclubs. The property itself is large, almost irresponsibly so. It's easy to get lost, but the layout is fairly forgiving. The hotel is literally built around the casino, but unlike several properties, you can actually get to where you're going without needing to cut through the sports book or the slot machines. In fact, the sports book is in the back of a bar and grill, so if anything, you need to go through a restaurant to be able to gamble. Aesthetically, the place is beautiful. Clean, shiny surfaces, high ceilings, a really cool collection of Rolls Royce cars, and even a tribute to the old Stardust Hotel in the back. So that's the end of the review, right? All good stuff, nothing to worry about. Yeah, not quite. Yeah, grab that pen one more time. It's time to address why Resorts World isn't exactly a five-star property. Despite coming in with a fresh slate and a brand new outlook on Vegas post-pandemic, there is some shoddy welding in the otherwise immaculate suit of armor that is Resorts World. Resorts World fails in three critical areas. Critical areas that are vital to a property's success, especially in a hyper-competitive environment like the Las Vegas Strip. And the first one is its location. Now, this is partially a problem of circumstance. Keep in mind, Resorts World is in a radically different climate 
from when it was initially planned as Echelon Place with the Boyd family, and from when it was originally announced as Resorts World itself. And most importantly, from when it was originally slated to open. In 2006, the North Vegas Strip was booming. There were still plenty of giants in the area. The New Frontier stood strong and tall, the Riviera was still operating Crazy Girls, the SLS was still Sahara, before it became Sahara again that is, and the old standby Circus Circus was going to be the budget MGM alternative to the upcoming City Center North project. The Stardust was in a great spot, and it was a great time to start fresh with a new property, hence the Boyd family's hasty demolition and announcement of Echelon Place, the $4.8 billion precursor which would eventually be Resorts World. But then, in 2008, the Great Recession hit and demolished everyone's plans in the area. In 2013, the climate had improved slightly, but after four years of the Strip being on life support and in danger of collapsing, it wasn't worth it to keep pushing for certain projects. The Fountain Blue Las Vegas next door had long since gone bankrupt, and other hotels had just shut down or demolished in hopes of starting up new projects that just didn't come to light. And by 2016, there just wasn't much going on on the north side of the Strip, and whatever did pop up, like the short-lived Lucky Dragon project, seemed to be doomed to the same curse as the Drew and Resorts world. In fact, Lucky Dragon, a similarly themed Asian-inspired casino, would go bust just a year after opening in December of 2017. As a result, in 2021, the only neighbors that Resorts World has are the Circus Circus, the Encore, and the empty, half-finished symbol of unfettered ambition that is the Drew Las Vegas. Soon to be the JW Marriott Las Vegas, but that's a video for another day. So while the property itself is self-contained and clearly designed so that you never have to leave the hotel, if you ever want to for any reason, it's certainly difficult. You either have to get a taxi or lift, which in this climate has been challenging, you can bring your car, which has its own challenges in Vegas, or wait until 2022 when Elon Musk's silly little Tesla tunnel is finished. Public transportation is always available via the Deuce, but the closest monorail station is at the Sahara, which is another 10 to 20 minute walk after you walk 10 to 20 minutes from your room to the Strip, depending on which tower you're in. But hey, the hotel can't help where it's built, you may say, so what else could possibly be wrong with the Resorts World? Well, the next thing that comes to mind is, there's not a lot of core strength to the property. Let me explain. Expectations were high from the get-go, as Genting Group promised us everything on property would be a performance. We were promised theaters, a full-fledged water park, gorgeous Asian theming, on-site gardens, a mini Great Wall of China, everything that you need to make a Las Vegas property perfect at the cost of $4 billion. And while the grand opening fireworks, dancing, and celebrity guests delivered an all-night party atmosphere for over 20,000 guests in attendance, a month later, once all the makeup and pretty clothes came off, Resorts World didn't quite live up to the hype. It's not because of the lack of giant pandas, or the conspicuously missing water slides and lazy rivers. No, those features were removed from the plans long ago. It's because the property relies so much on spectacle to get you through an experience. Now, spectacle isn't a bad thing within itself. Vegas has always used spectacle to captivate its audience. Spectacle is the Oriole wine bar angels flying overhead to bring you and your lover the perfect bottle of wine on your special romantic evening. Spectacle is flipping the stage upside down during a sword fight at Ka. Spectacle is rooftop thrills, a 10,000 psi water cannon, and front lawn volcanoes that draw you in before dropping you into the gorgeous Polynesian, Italian, and even ancient Roman halls of vice and indulgence for you to enjoy a whirlwind weekend, a hearty week-long holiday, or even a single night of passion. But once you get past the fireworks and dancing dragons, you're left with a Hilton hotel with a Rolls Royce outside the sports book. Oh, and I guess Liberace's piano. Am I the only one that thinks that thing's a bit out of place? Yeah, I am. Okay, moving on. Don't get me wrong, it's a big Hilton hotel, and it's got a lot of cool features. It's missing a few features, like the steakhouse won't be ready until later this year. That's understandable. But when the property opened, 95% of its features were up and running. 
and almost none of them are special or unique. Caesar's Palace is a bit gimmicky, but once you walk past all the animatronic statues, you still have an amazing mall, hotel, and casino filled with things you can't do anywhere else. Luxor is showing its age, and doesn't have a room that can hold a candle to anything at Resorts World, but the novelty of sleeping in Pyramid and having diagonal elevators, as well as both classic and modern style Vegas shows, is a boon. Cosmo is quirky, but it takes it all to the next level. There are art dispensers everywhere, the whole place is decked out in purple, and the pool is a movie theater. At Resorts World, the Asian theming has been largely dispensed with, and if it wasn't for the majority of restaurants consisting primarily of Asian cuisine, I wouldn't even know the property has a theme. Resorts World feels like an Asian casino in an American one that happens to be in the same building as the Hilton. It's still gorgeous, it's still spacious, but it doesn't feel special. It doesn't feel uniquely Las Vegas. And that sort of ties into the final tear in the patchwork that is Resorts World Las Vegas. There's not a lot of value here. It's not like the place is too expensive. Like I said, the pricing that I was seeing and paying was very similar to what I've experienced at properties like Aria, Wynn, and Bellagio. Waldorf Astoria, or Venetian, will probably be a bit pricier than what's on offer at Resorts World, but for what you get, it's still not worth it yet. Upon opening, it was missing critical features like the spa and fitness center. That can be partially explained away by COVID restrictions, but most other properties have at least their spas and salons available on an appointment basis. So why isn't the fully staffed Resorts World one ready on June 24th? Two out of eight of their signature restaurants still aren't ready, and don't have visible opening dates on the website. Also, don't bother asking Red, he doesn't seem to know either. Speaking of restaurants, despite the options, I only found myself dining or drinking at Resorts World a half dozen times. And while there is nothing offensive there, nothing blew my mind either. Though there is special mention to the all you can eat at the kitchen. For the price of it, it was underwhelming at best. I do enjoy the various custom cocktails and Asian beers that you can get around the property, but that's the majority of the good stuff. I found I had a lot more fun drinking at Resorts World than eating there. Which is a shame, because they do have so many great Asian cuisine options, and I love Asian food. But if you don't particularly enjoy East Asian cuisine, you may find your dining options somewhat limited on property. Speaking of limited, let's talk about the rooms. The strongest point for our room was the bathroom, followed closely by the view. Even being inside the giant LED sign, that was a pretty good view of the strip. I think being inside the sign is kind of neat, and as projects develop, that strip view will be really something. And while there was really nothing wrong with them, the rooms at the Resorts World Hilton Tower are kind of small for what to pay for. I shouldn't pay $150 for a room at Resorts World that's only 400 square feet, especially when I can go to Delano and get a better room cheaper. And that's it. That's everything I found wrong with Resorts World Las Vegas, really. And without getting into the nitpicky stuff like the flaws with the cashless gaming, or the gold finish on the Hilton Room faucets, or the issues they've had with restaurants running out of food, there's not much else to say that hasn't already been said. Every major, minor, and in-between vlogger, blogger, reviewer, and live streamer has been there, checked it out, and fundamentally said the same thing. Even Yelp and Google Maps are averaging low 4-star and high 3-star ratings. Though TripAdvisor is really ripping Genting a new one over any perceived flaw there. Those guys are brutal. But does this really mean anything? Keep in mind all these opinions are from Vegas veterans, professional travel bloggers, news reporters, and industry experts. Even I've been following this project since I was in my early 20s. I think what we need is an outside opinion, and I have just the person. There's someone who doesn't have Vegas on the mind 24-7, someone who hasn't exhaustively followed this project, and someone who would actually have a neutral opinion of the place. This is, of course, our very own dear producer, Wonder Woman, and she had this to say. Quote, It seemed like a regular hotel to me. It was flashy. It was definitely flashy. It was fine. It didn't blow me away. The room was small, special points for the shower though. It didn't stand out, there wasn't a specific cool theme I could find. It wasn't over the top comfy or spacious. It was alright, it was fine, it did its job. Oh, and I liked the pool. 
and I think that just about sums it up. Resorts World is a hit. It's more than a hit. It's a ground rule double. Worth the two bases. But it wasn't exactly the Grand Slam home run I think we were all expecting. Or at least the one I was expecting. I guess after you expect something for years, and years, and years, you get a certain vision in your mind. And, as Josh Brolin once said, reality is often disappointing. I don't think that Resorts World is a bad property by any stretch of the imagination. Just not quite what we expected. So, how good is Resorts World Las Vegas actually? If I'm being honest, pretty good. It's not going to be my new home casino or anything, that's for sure. And unless they status match me to something nice, most of my play will remain with the Mirage, Circa, and Planet Hollywood. It's glitzy, it's glamorous, and it's as close to an all-inclusive resort as you can get on the Las Vegas Strip. But it's clearly meant as a nice place for high-tier players and high-level Hilton guests to stay, both domestically and abroad. But unlike Lucky Dragon, they seem to be fine with the general public's business and even have some social media-friendly policies. So they'll probably get some return business from me. Maybe not as a full-on hotel guest, but probably at one of the many lounges and bars and maybe the club for my birthday one of these years. Overall, Resorts World Las Vegas earns a 4 out of 5. Alright there, Spinners and Sharks, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed today's review and found it informative, I'd appreciate a like, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Now that I've taken you on an exhaustive ride through the Resorts World experience, do you think you'll be visiting? Tell us why or why not in the comments down below. Until next time, though, this is Ace of Vegas signing out, and I'm wishing you all strong hands and, of course, happy spinning, you guys.